Hello and welcome. My name is Jörg. I am a German, a professional YouTube creator, 52 years of age, actually 53 very soon, and I'm here to talk to you about a very serious issue. I have been a YouTube partner for many, many years. Uh, they awarded me with the Silver and the Golden Play Award. I've been at their headquarters, I've been at their parties, uh, I even met their CEO Susan W. a while back. So I know my way around YouTube. I can honestly say that I don't hate YouTube. In fact, quite the opposite. I love YouTube. I helped build in YouTube. I put a lot of heart blood into this platform. I know a great many people that work for YouTube. YouTube is not evil. At least that's what I think. That's what I hope. But you know, I had many partners in my long career before this job here. Sometimes it happens that a partner gets too much leeway and then things get out of bound. This is what happened here. This is what happened here within the last year. And now it is high time to set things back to where they belong. Because about a year ago, a bunch of big advertisers united and set YouTube under pressure. And YouTube simply yielded. And why shouldn't they? Because they got big corporations with plenty of money on one side and lots of individual YouTubers with no power and no money on the other side. So they gave in. Basically, YouTube started to mess around with content that was within their guidelines, so it was okay to be on YouTube. But now they looked at the uploaded content and put it in categories. And some categories could make money and others could not. And then others could make some, but not enough. And the consequences of this are grave. Massive demonetization. Bots given power over humans. Bots demonetize, bots delete, bots issue strikes, bots even ban YouTube partners. Kicking out all of the small YouTubers. Taking away parts or even all of the income from long-term partners and giving all of the cash to the content YouTube, not the audience, likes. Censoring by uneven distribution of funds. Discrimination by categorizing completely different videos into the same group. Total transparency. Sudden change of rules and values. Community guidelines that are softer than a sponge and more elastic than rubber. In short, the apocalypse. This has to end for the benefit of the phenomena that we call YouTube. For the benefit of the creators. For the benefit of the audience for the benefit of the stakeholders at YouTube slash Google and also for the advertisers. So, for making a difference, we have to unite. I am calling all YouTubers to arms. No matter if you are a channel with 10 million subscribers or if you're just the guy who watches a video every now and then, I need you to stand by my side in this very important campaign. Our goal is to save YouTube as we know it. And therefore, I herewith officially initiate the YouTube Creators Union. United we stand! So, a YouTube Union, that's new. <laughs> or maybe, maybe there is one already and I haven't found it. But anyway, of course, we have some questions about what is a YouTube Union. Well, it's, a, it's different to the you know, run-of-the-mill trade union. How much does it cost to become a member? Nothing. I don't need your money. I need your strong sword arm. Or maybe better, your fingertip or mouse hand. <laughs> How do you join? Well, it's very simple. You simply join the Facebook group and you find the link down below. Uh, why Facebook? I know that a lot of you guys don't really like Facebook, but hey, it's YouTube's competition. And I think that they won't censor us there. I believe that we will be safe on Facebook. What are your obligations? None. None. Uh, you will be able to see what's going on because you will be a member of the Facebook group. And from time to time, I may ask you small things. For example, sending an email to an individual or an organization, or for sharing a video or a post, maybe even re-upload it somewhere. I don't know, that can happen. Most certainly, I will ask you for your opinion in the form of polls. I really want to run this as a democracy and not as a monarchy, <laughs> even though I love being the king. Well, actually, I have one request already, and this is please share this video. Not just share it, download it and re-upload it to as many places as you can. Upload it to, to YouTube, upload it to, I don't know, Facebook, you know, whatever you see 
like a good place for this video. Why do, you, do I want you to do this? Well, just to be safe. I don't want it to make it very easy to hush this video up by simply deleting it or something, just in case. I don't think that they're going to do it anyway, but who knows. So, I haven't monetized this video and I haven't included it into my content ID. This means you are free to copy it, you can edit it, you can use a part of it, you could use your own comments with it. Just do, do with it what you want. I don't care. So that's my request. And of course, you don't have to follow it. You know, as I said, no obligations. You may or may not do it. The YouTubers Union is entirely voluntary. So this means you can join and you can leave at any time. Uh, you do what you please. I just think that we have a, have a common goal and therefore we don't need stupid rules. All right, now let's talk about my demands. Uh, directed at YouTube's management, of course. And of course, this is just for starters. I mean, we will discuss this in the Facebook group, certainly, uh, but we have to start somewhere. But let's, let's develop this together. But here, here is my point. First of all, bring back monetization for smaller channels. I mean, in my book, you know, we need to have fair chances and we need to have a fair expression of opinions. And therefore, bring them back. It was unfair to cut them out of the monetization system, even if they weren't making a lot of money. They were hoping to make more money. How can you take away people's hope? So stop that. Yeah. Stop it. <laughs> stop it and re-monetize these channels. Stop letting bots decide whether or not you delete a partner's channel. You can't seriously do this. These are verified partners. They have been working with you for years. And just because some people find comp complaints for whatever reason, your bots have the power to delete them. That can't be. I want you to have a human calling up a partner that you're planning to delete and discussing this with him beforehand. Do you have any idea about what happens when on a Friday noon, when nobody is at work at YouTube anymore, uh, a bot closes down a channel that is the sole source of income of a YouTube creator? You know, this guy will be in the most dire straits and that's because of you. You are responsible for this. Stop it. Open up communication between your sensors, what you call content or content department or whatever, and the creators. It's not acceptable that we have to communicate through automized messages or maybe through our partner managers who really have nothing to say. You know, good people, but no influence in the organization really. I, if, you, if you are in a position to judge about our videos, then come out of your hiding and talk to us about it. I mean, that happens with a rating for a movie, for a Hollywood movie. It's an ongoing discussion. You know, tell us what you don't want. Maybe we do some editing and then it's okay. But be approachable. Just don't hide, okay? But you know what? Stop demonetization as a whole. Get rid of it. You know, go back to old times. We don't need demonetization. If a video is within your guidelines, we'll talk about those later, but if it's within the guidelines, then evenly distribute the ads over it. And if you must, if you must limit ads to certain content, if you really want to do this, then still pay out the money to every one of us. You know full well that you need some more critical content, something controversial to attract users to your platform. And then you can bombard them with your recommendations and trendings for videos that are full of ads. And that's okay, but the income from this needs to be spread also over to people that have the more critical content. You know what? You behave like a car manufacturer that decides to only pay the sales force because these are the guys that make the sale. So why pay anyone else? But you know, a car company that stops paying its workers, stops paying accountants, stops paying engineers, stops paying the cleaning team. You know what happens to them? Hmm. Go figure. And if your advertisers don't like that, then let them go back to the old dying print media. You know, and then watch them coming back with the tail between the legs. You know, they can't last. Stop preferring some partners over others. I mean, that's like George Orwell, really. I mean, you shouldn't do this. Some people are more equal than others. We had this before. So don't do it. You know, stop your preferred partner's program. Treat every one of your partners as an even partner. May, may that be a small partner, may be a big partner, where you have, may you have content for kids, or maybe have contents that are more critical, like news or religious debates or whatever. They're all creators. Treat them the same way. 
Then your community guidelines. Of course, it is okay to have community guidelines for what is allowed on a platform and what is not allowed on a platform. I don't want to see beheading videos on YouTube, certainly not. But be clear about it. If I look at the community guidelines today, that can be all or nothing. I mean, it gives you complete freedom to decide whether or not you want a video. You can always, you know, direct people to this kind of spongy and, and, and really soft set of rules that no doubt some fishy lawyers have composed for you. Get rid of those and give us clear examples of what is okay and what is not okay so that we know what we can do and what we can't. So, to sum it all up, here is my clear message to you, YouTube management. Start of message. Our original agreement was like this. We make videos and we bring in the views. You provide the infrastructure and bring in the ads. It's simple, isn't it? We creators, we do our job. We are making the videos and we bring in the views. Now you do your job too. And just your job. Bring in the ads so that we get paid. And don't do anything else but that. Don't go into politics. That's not for you. And keep your nose out of our content. That's our content. It's not your content. Understood? Come on. It ain't that hard. You can do it. So, pretty strong demands. How we will get YouTube to give in to those. Which ultimately they will be good for them. Because I believe if they follow them, their platform will be more successful. I think it's mismanagement what's currently happening. In any case, we'll convince them by hitting them where it hurts. Publicity, reach and money. First of all, we have to gather some strength. Strength is in numbers, specifically for a union. Once we have achieved that, and I'm hoping that it will be quick, once we achieve that, then we will be able to apply pressure. I guess that the press will be interested in our campaign. And it is high time that the world realizes what is going on behind the scenes of the world's one and only free VOD monopoly called YouTube. And then we can approach the decision makers at YouTube itself. It's not that hard. If we gather enough momentum, if we have enough backers, then they will talk to us. Look, look at Logan Paul. I mean, he's like having, I don't know, how many, 10 million subscribers or something? It's not that big, really, if you believe how many subscribers that there are in total. But Susan W. directly dealt with the issue. She will deal with us too, hopefully. In the future, we will waste so much stink that they will end up, you know, talking to us whenever they want to change anything. They will come to us and talk to us and convince us that this is the right thing to do so that they can avoid one more PR disaster. This is what happens at big corporations these days. Want to change anything? Let's talk to the union first. That's routine for them. It may sound hopeless to you, but it isn't. Unions work. Without unions, we would still have 12 or 16 hour days, six of them per week. Unions prevented open rebellions in many countries, probably including Germany, simply because they made the workers happy. Well, happy enough not to vote for the Commie Party anyway. Now I would like to address some of the comments and arguments that will certainly come up. First of all, it's their platform. They can do whatever they want. That is not true. They even call us partners. They don't call us users. They don't call us parasites. You know, they call us partners. And partners build things together. And that's exactly what happened. We built this platform together. It's not their YouTube. It's our YouTube. This is as much our platform as it is theirs. One more popular comment is, uh, go to uh, Vimeo, go to uh, Full30, go to, I don't know, Twitter or whatever. No. I helped building this platform. There's plenty of my heart blood in it. I refuse to surrender it without a fight. Also, you need to realize that all these services are a lot smaller than YouTube. And no full-time YouTuber can make a living by completely changing over to one of the rivaling platforms. So one more argument is only channels that went too far are affected. Advertisers can't accept them. Well, look at the airgun guys. I mean, just last week I saw dozens of channels being completely closed that dealt with pellet guns. You can't really use a pellet gun for a school shooting, can't you? But anyway, uh, some of these channels only dealt with Olympic disciplines, airguns used in the Olympics. So how can this be worthwhile banning? 
but the bots did exactly that. Then look at my poor colleagues at Zombie Go Boom. These guys use Xboxes to hit zombie heads that were made of foam, plastics and a little bit of ketchup probably. You know, the Mythbusters, a show that ran for many many years on mainstream TV, you know, did that and worse. And I saw a lot of advertisements and commercials next to that show. I'm not sure if you can confirm this, but on TV it was never a problem. But now, all of a sudden, on YouTube it is? Hmm. Okay, next one is the advertisers can decide by themselves if they want controversial channels. Well, not quiet. YouTube has defined five categories. Each one of the videos is inspected by the bots and then put in one or more of these categories. And so these categories are very, very different within one. So even within one of these categories, you find completely different content. So for example, the videos that I do about slingshots, are these slingshots are regarded as weapons. And so is an AR-15 with a bump stock. So a video that uh, goes ta -ta 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 with an AR-15 is in the same category as my slingshot video where I show people how to make a slingshot from a toilet roll and a, in an air balloon, right? But even worse, in the same category you find abortion videos. I can imagine that there's plenty of advertisers that would have no problem with my little balloon gun, right? But that would have a serious problem seeing the ad showing up next to an abortion video. But the bots are artificial intelligences and they learn and they keep getting better and better. So this will be over soon. Well, well. This is what YouTube keeps saying. But in reality, I cannot confirm that they're getting any better. They kicked out all these airgun channels because obviously some haters uh, kind of uh, agreed upon a campaign uh, to flag all these videos and they did this on a Friday at noon where at YouTube everybody went home. So the bots had their free run with it and because so many people flagged it they issued strikes and after the third strike they kicked out the entire channel. Hmm. I took part in a YouTube hangout just a couple of days ago and they told us be very careful with the title because these are just bots. So if you use something that could be considered bad or evil, then you know maybe the bots are doing something wrong and then your video gets demonetized or deleted. Well, you know, I mean, come on. I ask you, what is the value of an artificial intelligence that after one full year of learning can't make out the difference between a naked butt and the naked truth? Really? I mean, artificial it is. Intelligent? Hmm, not so much. Come on, YouTube, Google, with all your money, your experience, your resources, that's the best you can do? Then they say only weapon-related channels are affected by this. No, it's not true. A news channel that reports about war is affected, but also an obituary, complicated word for me, sorry, <laughs> uh, beat out curses. Even those, you know, you may be demonetized, an advertiser may choose to not be present on your video. So you lose money. So then people tell me, just find advertisers yourself and make sponsored videos. In fact, I do, and it's a good strategy. But you know what? I still want to go back to the original agreement. I don't like that. It's YouTube's job to find the advertisers. Why do I have to do this by myself? I don't understand it. They use my video to lure people onto their platform so they can watch stupid videos with lots of ads, and I don't, I'm not getting anything from them for that. I need to find my own advertisers. Well, I'm asking me, why do I need YouTube at all? But there is an even bigger problem, because not having ads means that it's not attractive for YouTube to put you into recommended or trending. I mean, this is of course nothing that I have confirmed, but I'm, I think I can tell it just by looking at my figures in analytics. I think that they reserve most of the space in trending and recommended for fully monetized videos with all the ads in there. Financially, it makes sense. Why would you give this valuable space to a video that doesn't make any money for you? Uh, so, but if you are not, if you're not featured in recommended and trendings, it is very, very hard for a YouTube channel to find new subscribers. So growth is very limited. So uh, finding own sponsors is a short-term solution only. All right, last not least, just get a Patreon. Well, I have a Patreon. I had one for about a year or something. But you know what? I don't want to do that. I don't want to go back to begging, you know. I want an honest deal. I want honest money for my honest work. 
and I wanted to be paid by the company that signed a partnership agreement with me, and that is YouTube. Please share this video. Please share the link to the Facebook group and join, join the Facebook group. Shield brothers and sisters, together we shall prevail. Thanks and bye-bye.